Hello, hello, and welcome to Blah Blah Black Sheep, a weekly yarny podcast where I, Sarah Korth of SEK Handmade, answer your yarny questions. Welcome. I'm so glad you're here. You guys, I feel like the worst mom ever. Starting off strong with a little story time. Friends, so I hate taking my children to the dentist. I would much rather go to the dentist myself than take my children to the dentist. So over a week ago when I got a text from the dentist saying that they had an appointment, I didn't tell my children about it because I didn't want them to worry about it for over a week. So I said to myself, self, tell them a couple days before. And so like on Friday, I told them, you have a dentist appointment. They're like, oh, do we have to get x-rays? Yes. Oh, um, but we were like, it's a few days away. Like, just relax. And then, bloop, it left my brain 100%. This morning, I am sitting at my desk, tippy tapping away on my computer, doing work stuff in my pajamas. And I hear a ding. And I look at my phone. Just a reminder you have a dentist appointment today. The big one was still asleep. The little one was furious that I hadn't reminded them yesterday. They they get to watch a video while they have their teeth cleaned. And so it's like, we got to figure this out ahead of time. <sighs> I feel awful that I did not remind them yesterday. Frankly, had they not texted me, I would have completely forgot. So today started off with dentist appointments for my boys. It was... Uh, it was fine. It was fine. It was like one of those situations where like we had less than an hour to get there. And so it was like, I need you to be calm, but also hurry up a lot. <laughs> so it was crazy. It was crazy. They did a great job, though. My oldest especially really hates the x-rays. He's gotten it worked up in his head like it's a lot more than it is. Um, and so he was like nearly in tears while the little one was getting his x-rays and, um, he pulled it together. He took lots of deep breaths. He, um, like the, um, dental assistant was wonderful. She did a great job of like distracting him with her tales of her spring break vacation that she got to go on. It was, it was good, but I feel terrible, terrible, terrible that I like woke them up and was like, we have to go to the dentist. <laughs> what an awful way to start the day. So there you go. I'm just wearing what I wore to the dentist. I thought this morning, I thought, um, throw some clothes on, be colorful. And uh, this is what it shows. I'm wearing my scrappy Lumi cowl. I'm not going to lie. This is a go-to for me a lot, especially when I, like, need. I feel like there's a dark spot there. Oh, it's like a little, eh. it's like a little uh, space between my stitches. That might be my, that might be my scene. Anyways, um, so this is what I wore to the dentist, and this is what I'm wearing for you today. It's my scrappy Lumi cowl. It makes me happy. All the colors make me happy. I'm going to pull it on over my head and then I'm going to fold the top down. I like doing it this way because I think it gives lots of fun colors to show and then the texture of the um all I can think of is wobbly the wobbly edge scalloped that doesn't feel like quite right so um this is all scraps from my Lumi shawl which was my advent um, shawl for this last year, 2023. Um, I wear them both all the time. I went to my local yarn shop on Saturday and wore my shawl because it was chilly out. Uh, but I love the cowl too because it's just so easy to throw on. It really is. Um, what is bringing me joy, you guys? The weather has not been amazing. Um, we have a chance of snow on Wednesday. 
However, I am starting to see glimpses of the fact that warmer weather is coming, and I've really been enjoying uh, plotting, plotting my outside plans. Um, I in when we lived in Ohio, I made I planted a full garden. Um, Brian and my father-in-law made me these two big garden beds. They were wonderful, and then at e at the end of both of them, I put up a trellis to grow things up, um, and that was wonderful. And um, and I haven't done a lot of growing since we moved, so I'm going to try to do some growing. The growing season in northern Wisconsin is much shorter <laughs> than it was in Ohio. So we're just going to see, because why not? Um, we have a whole area in our backyard that I'd like to dig up the soil and plant a whole bunch of wildflowers just for pollinators and whatnot. Uh, I've been itching to do that, but I just watched a video that was like, don't clean your gardens yet because all the pollinators are still hibernating and you're going to like tear up their whole little sleeping beds. So I'm plotting in my brain and not actually doing just yet. So, um, but I'm excited for that. I'm excited. Uh, it was really nice one evening and I made the boys go out and take a scoot with me. We all have scooters. One of our goals this summer is to get both of them riding a two wheel bike. And by our goals, I mean my goal. <laughs> I plan to force this upon them. Um, because they would never do anything fun if I didn't make them do it. So I forced them to go on a scoot with me. And especially the oldest was like, Neh. and then we got, I was like, we'll just go to this spot. Fine. We get there and he's like, let's keep going. <laughs> I swear. I swear. I hope he finds someone later in life after he's like moved out of our house to who, who will push him to do fun things. <laughs> I can't continue this for his whole life. Um, who knows? Maybe, maybe eventually he'll grow out of this and he'll adventure on his own. Who knows? Um, small businesses. Um, this, this is real life. I have my to-go mug because the first thing we did was go. Thankfully, my oldest, uh, man, he got ready faster than I think I've ever seen him get ready. He was ready to go, like, from he was asleep. I told him he had to get up and go to the dentist to, like, ready to walk out the door, breakfast eaten, teeth brushed, all the things, by, like, 7.20, like 20 minutes. And so I had him, it's a fun turn of events, I had him make me a bagel so that I could eat some breakfast. Um, and then I took my coffee and my to-go mug. The mug is nothing special. It's the stickers on the mug that make it special. I have these fun, uh, a goat and a um, alpaca that are knitting which I do knit as well. I've been craving knitting lately. I need to get a project. Um, and those are from Apartment 2 Cards. And then I have this lovely make sticker from the wonderful Bonnie of Woodland Stitchcraft. And then my sister gave me this B um, sticker for Christmas that she bought at a local store uh, by her. I will link to the Apartment 2 Cards and Woodland Stitchcraft. I, I don't know who made this, so I won't be able to link to that. Um, but that's, that's my mug today. On the go, but still supporting small businesses. <laughs> um, my earrings. I got these a while back, you guys. This was not my plan for the day. <laughs> and because of that, I'm a little... I'm a little less organized than I'd like to be, but these are my earrings that I'm wearing. These are from Sunrise Grove. There, that's better. Um, and I don't know if they still sell them. I got them a while back. They're super pretty. I love, oh, there we go, that's better. I love the little um, cutouts in them, and um, they're super lightweight. 
so pretty and easy to wear. Um, and then, you guys, I'll have these, but um, I have been in a bit of a panic. <laughs> I feel like people are doing pre-orders for their Advent kits even earlier this year, which is fine. I 100% understand that Advent kits are a lot of work for yarn dyers. And so I appreciate that. But I've started seeing people saying, like, last call for Advent kits. And I panicked a little bit. And so um, I ordered one Advent kit. And then I was like, do I need another one? So I found another one. So <laughs> I'll put up um, who I ordered from and their inspiration pictures so you can see what I have seen to purchase them. The first one I bought is from, it's a dyer, but I would call them a larger dyer than who I normally purchase from. It's from a chick that knits. Oh my gosh, you guys, I have so many typos in my notes here. Um, the children are home. Can you hear them? I hope not. If you can, I apologize. Um, if it gets real bad, I'll pause and go down to tell them to be quiet. Um, oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> um, so I ordered from a chick that knits. Uh, they, I would say, are a, a slightly larger dyer, though not a big dyer by any means. They have a physical shop that I would love to go visit someday. Um, and as I started seeing people, people, yarn dyers saying that Advents are like wrapping up here, I saw their inspiration picture and I was like, yes, please. So pretty. So I got that one. And then um, I saw somebody else say that it was wrapping up. And I was like, I don't, I don't want that one. But I think I want another one. So I started looking. And Asylum Fibers has what I think will be a really gorgeous um, Advent kit. And so I purchased that one. I saw or my first experience with Asylum Fibers was when I went to Stitch Up Chicago last April. And um, and uh, their yarn was really, really gorgeous. So I actually have some DK weight yarn. I'm actually looking at it right now thinking, that's so pretty. It's been caked up for a while because they caked it for us at the um, event. But I didn't use it. Um, and... I should make something out of that. I really should. I ended up getting an additional skein of it because it was so pretty and a gray to coordinate. So I should design something with that. I've really been craving the shawls lately. I, I've, I've honestly thought this last week, maybe I should just do all shawls. Maybe I should just go full in on the shawls. I'm, I won't. But I've been thinking about it. <laughs> so many shawls I want to design. Not enough time. Um, so check out those small businesses. I'd love to know if you're going to buy an advent this year. I am currently sitting atop my two advents from last year. They're in their boxes under my chair here. And, um, I have, this has started percolating my brain on, uh, what do I want to do for an advent project this year? So I'd love to know what you'd love to see in an Advent um, project. Do you want the colors to be mixed throughout? Do you want to be able to like actually work through it in December as you open your yarn? Do you want to be able to like hank it up and or wind it up, cake it up? Oh my gosh! And <laughs> struggling. And, and be able to work through the pattern actually through the month? I'd love to know. Um, do, 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 do. Speaking of shawls, let's talk announcements. <laughs> the spring shawl along has begun. 
Um, I record a little early just to uh, give myself time to edit and get everything posted. But um, when you see this on Wednesday, it will have started on Monday. We're working the whole month of April to um, finish up some shawls. Dab nab it. I told myself I was going to grab my shawls to show you what I'm going to work on. Okay, I'm going to go grab them real quick. I would love, love to get two shawls done. Now I'm like, is that the bag? That's not the bag. Um, I'd love to get two shawls done this month. Is this the bag? Um, yes. Okay. I'd love to get two shawls done this month. One I've already shown you, so I'm not going to show you that again. Um, I have a second Lumi uh, shawl that I have started. It's in two colors with my uh, East Coast Fiberco yarn. It's stunning. Um, and then I'm remaking my Cordelia shawl. I, guys, I started this last year during the shawl along. And look at how far I've gotten. <laughs> Not very far at all. But I'm super excited. It's going to be a lot more moody than my first. Can I tell you a little story? I was trying really hard um, a few years ago when this was released to be seen by We Crochet. And let me tell you, they didn't give a crap about me. <laughs> they gave me lots of yarn to work with, which was nice, but they never shared any of my stuff. And so I made my first Cordelia shawl to fit in one of their color schemes that was as close as possible to one of my color schemes. And it's okay. I love the shawl. Um, but to fit in the yardage and the color schemes that they had, it's just okay. It's just okay. I like it, but I don't love it. So I was like, you know what I want to do? I want to love it. And so I picked out some new yarn. Um, that This is Malabrigo. It's a really moody. Let me show you the cakes because it's easier to see. Really moody, um, deep maroony color that's getting washed out a little bit it's more I don't know my camera's not loving it it's really deep it's super gorgeous and then I picked out two other colors um that are similar but not the same so I picked out this kind of cool and neither of them are attached that'll help I picked out this kind of cool um Know, almost a grayish. It's got some pinky tones to it, um, but it's much cooler than it's showing up right there. Um, it's very pretty. And then my third color that I got is this super pretty um, speckled. And so this is kind of the unexpected, which I love a good unexpected color. So it's kind of a similar, it's a very similar base color to this one maybe a little more pinky um but then it's got really great pops of navy and orange in it and i'm not an orange person and it's just so fun so i would like to remake my cordelia shawl in yarn that i really love which i do really love this and um I think I want to expand it a little bit. I was a little limited in height based on the yarn that I got from Lee Crochet. Um, and now I'm not. Now I'm not. I have, I have at least another skein of the maroony color, but I might have another skein of each of them. I don't know. I'm going to have to look. Here's the issue with putting things off. And I don't, I don't keep a journal. I don't keep a journal. I have a journal. <laughs> A notebook here but I don't keep a journal of um, of my projects as I'm working on them I really should because I know I had a plan for how to put those three colors together I don't remember what it is <laughs> so I'm gonna have to remake my plan so um, the shawl along is going on right now I hope you'll join us I am currently running three areas i think this is maybe going to be the last time i run three areas for um make alongs um there's discord which i am not great at so if um 
<laughs> I'll put my email address below. If you'd like to join us on Discord, shoot me a quick email. I will send you a link. They expire after a certain amount of time or maybe after a certain number of uses. I don't really understand. But if I send you the link directly and you use it right away, it's fine. It just keeps giving me new links to invite people, though. So <clears throat> if you know how Discord works, let me know because I am clueless. Um, I probably need to like Google it and watch some videos and stuff. I did Google and it, it did not give me a deeper understanding. <laughs> and I only have the patience to spend so much time on it. Um, here's what I'm going to do though. As a little thank you for joining in. Okay, so blah, 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 back it up a little bit. Spring shawl along. Everyone is welcome. Every pattern is welcome. Whips are welcome like my whip. Um, I have some amazing, um, <clears throat> excuse me, some amazing prizes set up. My shawl cuff that I wore last week, the maker of that shawl cuff is offering up a shawl cuff. Um, I'm just scrolling back to see if I can find. Um, oh, lovely. I put the link, but not the maker. Um, I, I'll do the things and link them below again. Um, they were so sweet. She was so sweet. Um, Monique, I think she's going to offer up a shawl cuff, which I think is so appropriate for <laughs> shawl along. Um, I had, um, oh my gosh, Veronica of Blue Star Crochet reach out. She has a course that she'd like to offer to, for free to someone, which I think is amazing. She's a great teacher, and uh, I love working with Veronica anytime I can. She's incredibly organized and very smart, and uh, you will like her too. Uh, and then I have some stuff. I'm looking in my open closet right now. I have um, a very springy bag, and then I've just collected some other stuff. So I need to take some pictures of those and start sharing that. And then I'm going to release my flossy shawl tomorrow. And I'm going to, by the time you see this, I will have reached out to Miss Babs and asked them if they'd like to contribute some yarn because the flossy's in their yarn and they've been lovely and wonderful. So fingers crossed. If they don't aren't interested in providing a prize, I'll find some. I'll find some a yarny someone who is. So there are going to be prizes. Any shawls are welcome to be entered to win the prizes, though you have to uh, work on one of my patterns. So that's how that's going to go. Oh, and so what I wanted to say then was I want to give you a little discount code that'll be good through the whole month of April on any of my shawl patterns. So use the code, keeping it simple, SPRING15, all caps lock, all caps lock, capital letters. They're all capital letters, SPRING15. Um, I'm going to make it so that you can use it multiple times. So if you get a shawl pattern and you plow through it and you want to go back and get another shawl pattern, the discount will be good through the whole month of April. Um, and it'll be 15% off on all, all my shawl patterns, which I was, I was looking through. What did I decide? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 12 patterns to keep you occupied for the month. <laughs> um, Local yarn shop day is coming up. My testers are done with my Harper scarf. They um, turned out really beautifully, and the ladies were so wonderfully helpful. Um, that'll go to my tech editor, or should be at my tech editor by the time you see this video. Um, if you would like it to be a free pattern offered through your local yarn shop on local yarn shop day, uh, drop a comment below of with who your local yarn shop is, and I will reach out to them to see if we can partner up. And there you go. That's all my announcements. So let's dive into some questions. If you have a question, people have been sharing questions, and I'm so it, it brings so much joy to me to see them um, and to, as I open up my little document that stores all of them to see new questions to check out every time. So thank you to those of you who have been submitting questions. Um, I appreciate you. Oh, just dropped a bunch of stuff on the floor. That's fun. 
<laughs> my gosh, you guys. Oh, yarn on the floor. So, okay. I need to be able to read the question. So, I need another table here is what I need. <laughs> okay. I didn't say. So, there's a form down below. Click the link to the form. Type in your question there. It, it helps me keep organized, and I really appreciate it. So, thank you to everyone who has asked questions. Let's get to question number one. Do you have a beginner crochet shawl pattern you could recommend? Yes, I do. Okay, so I went looking through all my shawl patterns. I made a list here. And um, here's the deal. I need some variety, friends. Not in shawl patterns, but in yarn weight. <laughs> You may know or have noticed that I love fingering weight for a shawl because it just gives such nice drape and lightweight fabric. Um, so most, so I have one knitted shawl and then I have one worsted weight shawl, one DK weight shawl, and one sport weight shawl. Uh, I will say I already have plans for a fall shawl fall shawl, um, that is going to be, I believe it's DK weight because that's another collaboration with Blue Sky Fibers and I already have the yarn for that. Um, I'd be curious. I'd be curious. Would you let me know below? I'm about to start talks with a dyer who has agreed to do kits for our mystery um, Cal that we do in October every month. Um, I'd be curious to know what weight would you like? She and I are going to um, make some kits uh, so that um, you you have to think about what uh, what yarn you want. You can just get one of her kits, and I think we're going to do four of them. So there's going to be you know some variety. We have not decided on that yet, but I'd love to know, Would is weight of yarn something that, um, that affects the difficulty for you? Um, I have a lot, obviously, a lot of experience working with fingering weight yarn, but also having a lot of experience working with people who are just learning to crochet. The finer the yarn, the harder it is to see your stitches because they're all just smaller. Um, so my recommendation for a beginner crochet shawl, um, my knit shawl is pretty beginner friendly if you knit. Um, <clears throat> it's very simple, repetitive, um, pattern that I really love. Um, and it is, it's worsted weight too, I think which for a knit shawl then, you know, goes a lot faster than fingering weight. So here's my recommendation. My recommendation for a beginner shawl is my Marin shawl. So this is my Marin shawl. This is my original one. It, it is worked end to end. So you start on one end, you increase, 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 increase. You get to the middle, you do a couple rows not increasing. And then you decrease, 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 decrease until you get to the very end. So I feel like it's very, let me show you my second sample. This was the one I just finished up. And you're going to see tails and no tassels because I didn't make it there yet. So this is what it looks like in a more neutral color palette. Um, this is a two-row repeat. So you are, once you get the pattern of the stitches down, you're just repeating again and again. You are only increasing or decreasing. And you're only doing each of those things on one edge. So with a, a traditional triangle shawl that's either just like triangle or my boomerang shawls, 
or crescent or half moon or whatever you call them. Somebody told me that it looks like a Grinch smile when they do like the curve around. And I thought, yes. Also, it looks like the Cheshire cat from Alice in Wonderland that it's kind of big and then wraps around. Um, anyways, I digress. Those shawls often increase at multiple spots. And so that can be a little harder to manage. With this shawl, you are either increasing or you're decreasing. And so you only have to focus on one thing. Um, so I think that's super helpful for a beginner. It's worsted weight yarn. I think that's super helpful for seeing your stitches. We're not doing a million bazillion um, complicated things here. It's kind of just one thing at a time. And then this border, which I would say is the most challenging portion of this whole shawl, um, it repeats a whole bunch. And it's, it's one row. This is one row that you have to get through. The other thing is, if you don't like the border or this border takes a specific number of stitches, so if you think you've messed up the, the number of rows you're gonna need, um, it just throw on a different border. Throw on a different border. You, single cro you do a single crochet border across the top. That's what gives it that nice smooth edge. You could just do that on the bottom too. Or you could add a little um, twisted single crochet border or a little something else. <laughs> I don't really do blankets, so I don't have a lot of simple borders, but I'm, I know they're out there and they're very pretty. So you could very easily throw something even more simple on the edge of that and it would be so easy. So that's my recommendation. I was thinking I I should do a a super simplistic um, boomerang shawl and so that it would be a great like first step for people into that shawl shape where you're not learning a bunch of stitches or switching back and forth between stitches a bunch but your focus is on where the increase is how do I keep this shape all of that kind of stuff more seeing the shape than than playing with stitches that would be fun and then we could do a couple border options so that you could zhuzh it up at the end you could either like keep it real simple or we could go a little fancier I don't know see this is why I just I'm just like in a shawl mode and I just want to make shawls um so there you go I will link to my Marin shawl below. I will link to Malabrigo is what I used for this guy. Um, and Sweet Pea and Sparrow is what I used for this guy. I'll link to all of that loveliness. Let's see, I don't really wanna set those on the floor. Um, so that, that you can check them out. Should I, should I be a little more respectful of my projects? Probably, maybe fold them a little bit. Do, 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 do. Lay them nicely instead of just piling them up. Oh my goodness. Okay. Um, 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 um. There you go. All right. Question number two When buying hand dyed yarn, Hanks. I struggle to determine how the colors will look once they're crocheted. There, often no, there are often no samples to reference, so I buy what looks like pretty, what looks pretty, and cross my fingers as I swatch. Do you have any tips or examples that could help? Okay, yes. I did a very in-depth uh, talk about this a few episodes back. So I'm going to do a kind of condensed version of that now. Um, I want to say, okay. I'm going to give you some general guidelines for when you look at yarn, how the color is going to lay. The tricky part about this is, that, um, oh, I wish I could find an example. 
depending okay so if you have oh my gosh it depends on several things the stitches what kind of stitches you make with the yarn are going could, could totally change how the yarn how the colors lay so if i do if i'm doing puff stitches and i'm pulling a whole bunch of that yarn into a concentrated space that might make the depending on how many puff stitches I'm doing that would make the repeats that happen in the yarn come a lot quick a lot more quickly right because you're condensing a bunch of the yarn into those puff stitches and so the changes are going to happen happen more rapidly if you are working a fabric that is super open lots of chains some laciness to it then that's going to spread the color changes out a lot further. Um, so the repeats are going to be spread across. Now, if you go back and forth between those in the same fabric with the same yarn, then you're going to have a little bit of both, right? You're going to um, you're going to have it condensed together in the puff stitch sections, and then if you go into a more open section. Um, then the open section is going to spread all of those color changes out. So the stitches make a difference. The other thing that makes a big difference is the size of the project. And what I was saying that I hope I, I'd like to find a picture of this and maybe I'll see if I can hunt one down. If I do, I'll put it here. Um, <laughs> Size makes a difference, and this can be really evident in a sweater. So if you've got a yarn that changes through colors pretty distinctly, and you wrap that yarn around your body, and then you wrap that same yarn around your arm, the color changes are going to be spread out a lot more around the circumference of your whole entire body than they are around the circumference of your arm, which no matter what size you are is smaller than your whole body. So if you're working a pretty simple stitch, especially um, with some lar longer and more distinct color changes, you might end up with some kind of pooling or striping that happens one way across the body of your top and happens totally differently around your uh, arm, arm, that's what that's called, <laughs> the sleeve of your sweater. So uh, the other thing I've heard is like people making, like a, taking a self-striping yarn and making socks. Let's say the self-striping yarn was made for socks. So it's going to give you potentially, you know, some small stripes when you work a small circumference item like a sock, right? Relatively speaking, small a sock is a pretty small circumference. If you take that same yarn into a bigger project, then instead of maybe, let's say the sock yarn stripes like this, if you take that into a cowl, you may end up with stripes like this. Or you may end up with something that doesn't quite stripe because if you stretch that far enough, you may work through a whole repeat of the color before you work through a round of your project. So that's something to think about. Let's let's actually look at some skeins though and um and let me let me talk you through just a couple of the things we talked through more in depth in the last one. I will try my darndest to find um, to find that episode and link it below so that you can check out that question. I do put chapters in all of these, so if I mean I would love it, I would love it if you would watch through the whole other episode. But if you just want to reference that question, you can go to the bottom of the show notes and there are chapters and then you can skip forward to the appropriate chapter for this question that I answered. So the first thing I thought to myself was, do I have a full skein of yarn, 
left for a project that I've already made. I do. Um, so that I can show you what does it look like in the Hank and what does it look like in the project. And this is real bright. So I hope, <laughs> I hope that this is helpful. Okay. So this is a skein of yarn from um, Cornbread and Honey. And I just want to spin it slowly and show you the color changes in it. So there are some more sizable um, splotches of yarn, of yarn, of color in this. Um, and I can even open this up. So, so I want to show you this first in the Hank. Now, one thing to think about. Okay. So I think what a lot of yarn dyers do is they put the yarn in their pants, they dye it up, they leave it in, and then they hank it up. So it's not like they're disturbing the color sequence by rehanking it. Like if I took, if you dyed the hank and then you took it and you rehanked it in a slightly smaller or larger circumference hank, it would redistribute where all those colors lay. But I would say for sure, I think most dyers don't do that because A, extra work, B, don't know what the purpose of that would be. But because it's in the hank here in the way that it was dyed, you can see where the colors were laid. So one way to pay attention to how the colors are laid is to just follow the loop around. So this is the order that the colors are laid on the skein. So start at one spot and just notice like how big, like, oh, there's a little bit of orange. We go into a, a little bit of lighter pink. We've got some darker pink and some speckles. We've got some bold orange and some deep yellow here. And just kind of look at the color as it has landed on the hank. This is the best you can do if you're not allowed to open up a hank. Now, when I buy from yarn dyers, I really, really like it when they have a picture of it hanked and a picture of it open in its big loopy do. Does that have a name? If it does, I can't come up with it right now. So since this is my hank of yarn, I'm going to open it up for you. And let's take a look at how these colors lay. So when you open this up, you can see about how big those sections of yarn are and you can see let's see if I can show you this you can see oh my gosh you guys in this section see how this is a really bright skein of yarn I'm sorry see how it's pink over here but orange over here so that's all going to lay differently right it's not a solid all the way through color it's changing as we go so this is a hank of this yarn. Now, I know, I know I've unhanked this before, but let me see if I can figure out. My guess is it was dyed maybe like this. So see how there's pink up top, oranges here, pink, orange, pink. It would not surprise me if that's how it was dyed up. Um, Please don't go into a yarn shop and just start unhanking their yarn willy-nilly. Please ask. <laughs> Please. Um, but having it open like that, I think, really helps um, notice where the colors lay. So this yarn made this shawl. So you can see that those shorter color changes really distributed across the shawl in this stitch pattern in a very random way. So there's really no distinct color pooling, I don't think, in this. You can see there are little bits, like there's some lighter here and some orange here, but generally speaking, there's no strong color pooling in, in any of it. And that's due to the fact that this yarn doesn't have very long or 
um, strong contrasting, that's the word I'm looking for, repeats of color, and that this open stitch pattern broke it up pretty well. So if you find a yarn, and it doesn't have to be this contrasty, but if you find a yarn that ha is constant, has constant color changes, I think you're probably going to find and has constant color changes across a section. So remember I opened that other one up and it was like pink and orange across. Um, that means each time you come back to that spot in the yarn, it'll be a little different because across that area of yarn, it changes. So same here, you can see like that's all one section of yarn, but it's not all just the same. And so it's probably not going to pool super strongly. Now, I know this is the yarn I showed before, but this is the only one I have. I talked about planned color pooling a couple. I say a couple because they all feel like not that long ago, but it's probably a little while back. We talked about planned color pooling and I showed you this guy. Um, and then I went searching for more planned color pooling because I was like, I might need more of that. Do I need more yarn? No. Tell me no. I just bought two advent kits. Okay. So this yarn has really strong color changes. And that's because it was designed, it was dyed specifically for assigned color pooling, which is different than planned color pooling. But it has big sections. See? Big green, big black, big green. It, and they are that way all the way through the yarn. And same over here. And then there's this very large section of creamy yarn with speckles in it. This is made to pool and it's made for designs that are meant to work with the pool. <laughs> so this, if you work this up just with, um, just with a non-pooling, non assigned pooling um, project, you are probably going to end up, again, depending on your circumference, depending on your um, stitch pattern, you're probably going to end up with some pretty strong color pooling. So what I look for in yarns, I, I tend not to like color pooling. I'm sure there are people who do, uh, but I tend, when people, <laughs> I've had several people say to me like, oh, look at how cool this, that, like the pattern it made with the pooling. And I'm always like, mm, no, thank you. I love that for you, um, but I wouldn't wear it. <laughs> um, so to avoid that pooling, I look for uh, yarn that A, the colors aren't hard lines like this one is. It's not cream and green and black and green and cream and you know it's not mm, 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 that kind of fade between each other which this one does better right the colors are more similar it's not as hard a distinction between the shifts in the color um or I look for yarns that have a lot of color and distribute them all throughout instead of having really specific sections for colors. So that's my tip. Um, and then look for dyers that have, if you're shopping online, have that nice open uh, skein laid out because then it's easier to see. I know in my last video that I talked about this, I opened up a skein that I thought, or a hank that I thought was, um, had pretty short color repeats, and then I opened it and I was like, oh, these are actually pretty big. So being able to see it open like that gives you a really good idea of how big those repeats of color are, how distinct those repeats of color are, and then it gives you a better idea of how they might pool. The more distinct and the longer the repeats, the more likely you're going to have color pooling. Um, and that will shift as you shift the size of your project, which is what makes, I was going to say, you specifically say swatching. 
you can swatch, but if you swatch this for a sweater, that's not your body. <laughs> and so the colors will lay differently on a bigger circumference. So, so it's a challenge. It's definitely a challenge. Some of it's just experience. Some of it really is just trial and error. And like I said, I opened a skein in my last one and was like, oh, those are much larger repeats than I thought they were going to be. Um, and sometimes it is just a bit of a guessing game. So there you go. Uh, you could, a bonus tip, you could go on Ravelry and search the yarn and see, um, I think, I think you can search a yarn and then see projects made up in that yarn. So that might help you get a better idea of like what it at least looks like in a fabric, even if it's not the exact fabric. And you can go opposite way too. You can go to a pattern and then look at the yarns that other people have made that in and get an idea of what that yarn is going to look like. Now, if you are uh, an extra large and you're like, wow, that yarn looks real pretty on that extra small. If it's like a sweater, we're talking significant circumference difference. And so, again, the color isn't going to lay exactly the same. So there you go. All right. I have babbled on for plenty long enough. Thank you so much for joining me today. I so enjoyed answering your questions. I'd love it if you'd leave a question. I'd also love it if you would like this video, subscribe, and maybe even share with a friend. Our community is growing here, and it makes me so happy because I love you all so much, and lots of people should have the opportunity to join us. Don't forget to drop answers to those questions I asked, your favorite yarn shop, um, what thoughts about an advent shawl, shape, stitches, anything you'd want there, and... Uh, and yeah, go shop those small businesses and we'll see you next week. Happy crafting.